Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, how are you guys doing, man? I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. I'm having a good one myself. Had a good day at work. My job is now easy. I understand all the moves, all the dishes, so I'm chilling. I'm cruising at work, so we should have a very good future for the AG Tactical Squad because I'm I'm synced in at this point. We're we're locked in. Um, before we continue, though, I got to shout out all the all the subscribers, man, from the bottom of my heart. You guys got me to 12,000 subscribers recently. Love you guys, man. You guys are amazing. Shout out all the Patreon members. It's like 84 strong paid members, uh, 200 free members. Shout y'all out, man. You guys are holding it down, supporting the hell out of the channel. You know what I mean? If anybody else wants to go and support, obviously, the link is always down below. Also, go check out my Instagram, people, because that's where we connect and we communicate. Now, a few of you said I'm not really that active on that Instagram. Listen here. I hear you loud and clear. We're coming. I'm, I'm going to just show you the day in the life. So make sure you follow that. Send me ideas. Send me DMs. You know, all that good stuff. Without further ado, man, you guys see from the title, we got Mr. Daryl Brooks. And this is the final part of this, basically this, this um, what do you call it? The proceeding to remove his lawyers from the case, right? This is the proceeding where the judge has to go ahead and make sure you're not mentally incapable and that, you know, it makes sense that you represent yourself. You're not criminally insane or anything like that. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, we're going to hear a few things from Brooks at this point, and I'll tell you people, you know, he never fails. I'll just say he never fails to disappoint in the entertainment. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check this out. Attorney Perry, anything you want to add to what I've questioned Mr. Brooks on at this time or any other information you think I should know? <clears throat> We will um, promptly give Mr. Brooks um, preparations that we've done for trial. We'll have delivered to him, and I understand that the uh, the jail is going to be working to make uh, electronic discovery reviewable for him and taking all those steps. From the state, anything you want to add to the record at this point, Attorney Opper? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. There's a couple of points that uh, you could indulge me or permit. Um, the court has certainly been very thorough. There's just a few things that I would like um, that you could perhaps uh, drill down on just a tad bit more. My concern is on the form that you've just spent extensive time going through with Mr. Brooks. There's uh, indication at the very, very top of it. And uh, again, in the middle part, uh, suggesting that Mr. Brooks has the right to an attorney at any time of the proceedings or any time during the proceedings. You have been very clear here uh, with him that that's not absolute. So I, I just would like him to be advised that he can't flip flop, he can't get into the trial and decide on day one he wants a lawyer and then change his mind back and change his mind back again. I think he should be advised of that because the form does say I may change my mind at any time on the second sentence of the form. And that needs to be made abundantly clear to Mr. Brooks that that's, I Damn, believe. she's smart. She's smart because even I would have tried to use that as a loophole. It says right there, right there on the paperwork, right there on the paperwork. You see it? it, it uh, let me get my Daryl Brooks voice, you know, right there on the paperwork, right there. You see it? It says I could change my mind at any point in time. You know what I mean? He would have been on that bullshit. That's hilarious. I, I like how she already can sense that this is about to be a clown circus. So she's doubling down on all the security measures. And when I tell you, she... She not playing here. I like Opper. She not here to play no games. And who do you see right behind her? Right there in the corner with his hands crossed? Big security. Shit. She must have sent a bunch of people to jail to have a security detail with you every day. Like what? Bro, his full-time job is to sit behind this lady. Like what? 
Who wants to kill Opper? That's what we need to find out. She got ops out here for sure. <laughs> this form is used largely in the pre-trial capacity and not the week before trial. So um, I would like the court to please advise him of that. Do you want to do these one at a time or do you want me to? Sure, I think that's okay. a good idea. Um, Mr. Brooks, did you hear the state's concern as voiced mm -hmm. by attorney opera just now I, I think you were you were pretty clear in what you advised me of I, I think you made it very clear that it would be challenging but not impossible that was your exact words verbatim so what needs to be made abundantly clear when you've already done that thank you mr brooks um one of the challenges of being judge is I can't give advisory opinions, right? I can't give advice, but in the context of waiving your right to an attorney, I think it's important that you understand exactly what attorney opera has just said. And that is um, this form is generally used in the pretrial context, not <laughs> at the 11th hour on the verge of a trial starting. You are correct. Um, it's not impossible. It's incredibly challenging. We told you a couple of the cases that I would need to consider. Um, but what I would further tell you and advise you is that the right to an attorney is not absolute. And that's from the case law. Once waived, the Sixth Amendment right to counsel is no longer absolute. And I'm looking at the... So basically, if we can't find somebody to represent you, so nobody want to do it, nobody want to take it, you're fucked, okay? So boo-hoo, cry about it. Let's get back to this courtroom. Let's start there. Let's get back to this courtroom and continue. While you feel bad, listen, Sonny Boy, we're moving on, you know? It, it's kind of like the hard version of going to trial, you know? The, the regular version is, you know, you have the lawyer... Your lawyer fights on your behalf. You know, if you have some money, you'll win. The hard version is maybe the damn near impossible version is the represent yourself route. Like, what the fuck is that? You guys hit me in the comments with anybody who won their court trial who represented themselves because I might need to look into that. <laughs> Johnson case of State versus Rhodes, citing to United States versus Selena and other cases from various circuits. That was a Seventh Circuit case, but... Menfield versus Borg, Brown versus Wainwright, Merchant, United States v. West. Those are all cases that are cited by Rhodes. And I referenced State versus Lomax. There's also State versus Lovetto. And these are some of the considerations that that I would need to consider if it were raised. And that includes practical concerns of managing its docket. That's my concern. Impact that a request may have on its general responsibilities for the prudent administration of justice, the timeliness of the request for substitution of counsel. All of these cases are substitution of counsel cases, but the case law makes clear that when a pro se person seeks to now, okay. um, however you want to call it, sir, in pro per person wants to. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, sir. The last video, they had this whole argument about pro se and pro per and how it was different. Daro saying no. It's basically you don't get a lawyer, whichever way you want to cut it, however you want to do it. It's And then she went into the history. She said it was derived from a Latin word and pro per is the same is an abbreviation of a latin word that means pro se so is there's no difference and then he smiles at you like he checkmated you he's like no no pro se no no no. i mean pro per yeah pro per no that that's a distinct difference like bro like dude you're really shaming your family like this is some on that on that disgrace my family type shit like you're making the whole brooks line look terrible I highly doubt that anybody else was really putting on for the Brooks family, but you're, you are not helping, bro. Like, throw away the last name. It, it's not good no more. Like, that's crazy. 
Shout out to all my subscribers with the last name Brooks. I'm just playing. Request an attorney. I treat that as a request for substitution of counsel because you're acting as your own attorney. I think you understand that because we've discussed it, you've acknowledged it, but did you hear all of the advisements just now? I heard the advice. Any questions for me about that? No. All right, Attorney Opper, the next. Also, I think you have made it abundantly clear, but um, you touched on the idea of co-counsel or hybrid counsel that obviously once he's allowed to self-represent, there will literally be no one sitting next to him, not as if he can ask some questions and another attorney sitting next to him can ask some questions or they can share responsibilities or duties. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brooks. Did you hear what the state just said just now? I'm going to name this the prosecution begs Daryl Brooks to not represent himself <laughs> because they're literally like they're like, bro, come on. Like, I just would like to remind him, your honor, that there will literally be no one there next to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. tough. I heard it. And again, I think like was just stated, you were abundantly clear on that issue as well. We talked some yesterday about some of the challenges. You would agree with that? As far as it, representing you yourself. And uh -huh. I'll be a little more specific. Yesterday, I went through the experience of not only your own attorneys, but the experience and the resources available to the state. Do you remember that? I do. I may not have said it this way, but one of the things the state will be able to do is there are three attorneys seated at that table. They can divide and conquer the work between them. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Look at how he's smiling all smugly like this is so below him. You're going to see what you're below. You're going to be below Bubba in a minute. <laughs> between them. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> yes, ma'am. You're fully informed about that, correct? And I'm going to just, I, I know you don't like this word, but you understand you're going to be sitting at that table by yourself, right? I'm not alone, I don't think. There will be no attorney seated next no, to you, correct? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. All right. I know what you mean. I know what you, you mean. Will... No, I'm not alone. You know, I got God on my side. <laughs> I got God on my side. <laughs> you're a fucking dumbass. God ain't helping you, bro. You think... <laughs> Honestly, you think God is like, oh, yeah, that guy's in trouble. Let me. Oh, he killed how many people? How many people did he run over? Oh, shit. No, we're not helping him. Like, dude, God ain't helping you, bro. Shit. You will have the sole responsibility to cross examine witnesses, to present evidence, to make arguments to the court, etc. Did you hear me say that? Yes, ma'am. And you're in formed of all of that. I am informed. Any questions regarding that? Not at all. All right, attorney Opper, your next point. Thank you. Uh, on the second page of the form, you did uh, touch on him under the section that reads on the form. I understand that if I represent myself on the fifth bullet, he wrote in there, please elaborate first. I believe you did elaborate on that and further told him that you're not allowed to uh, provide legal advice to him, but I did know if there was a specific question that uh, Mr. Brooks had that perhaps uh, the court could address, perhaps not if it hinges on legal advice, but Fair it enough. was a little bit ambiguous what he wrote there. Fair enough, sir. You obviously wrote some things on this form. Um, do you have any questions for the court at this time regarding this form? Um, I think you, I think you touched on it a little bit, um, on what the question would have been. And that was basically just, um, the stressing that I did of the, the pro per pro, pro se thing. Cause essentially from my understanding is that pro se in a sense, because I would be basically like I'm a licensed attorney. So that, that would kind of limit what I'm able to do versus 
What? You touched on it a little bit. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means no, what the fuck are you saying? That pro se means you're an attorney, but you don't have all the privileges of a licensed attorney. You're an idiot, bro. Pro se and pro per are the same thing. It just means you're not going to have a lawyer, bro. Yeah, I mean, a little Sir, bit I'll more. tell you, it doesn't matter what you refer to yourself mm -hmm. as, whether it's pro se, pro per, in uh, Priya persona, um, you will be acting as your own attorney. And I believe you fully understand that. I, I want to go back to the box that you did not check, though. Given everything that we've discussed here today, um, do you have any questions regarding the section regarding what an attorney would do on your behalf? And I don't mean you acting as an attorney, but a licensed attorney in the state of Wisconsin assigned to represent you. Yeah, you, you touched on it. Um... I think it came up like right when I had voiced that and you kind of clarified it. Understanding that this section refers to a licensed attorney in the state of Wisconsin, would you be willing to check this box now? That you have read this section and that you are informed of the above? Yeah, I, I see. You have the original, I'm gonna ask that uh, if, you, if you're willing to do that, that you do that, initial it, and date it. This is like, this is literally like in high school when they walk through the questions and the answers. He's such a child, like he's a juvenile. It's crazy that you can be in your 40s. Like, just think about that. Like, you could be in your 40s still trying to be a rapper. Okay, that's like 14-year-old aspirations. Unless you blow up and you become a rapper, you know then that works then you then then you're successful but if not move on brother you're 40 okay so he wants to be a rapper he has random spurts of anger can't control his emotions and bro has long fingernails like i don't know why i threw that in it just it's just it's just it's like he's a child he doesn't have good hygiene beats his woman who was underage in the first place when they met Beats his woman when he when he gets angry. Like, come on, bro. That shit is insane. The only time I'll say, yeah, she kind of deserved it is if she jumped on him and started punching him and beating them up. And then, you know, you could you could get seriously hurt. So, yeah, I knocked her out because, well, don't knock her out. But, yeah, I punched her because I needed to get away. Other than that, bro, there's no reason, bro. There's zero reason. He's he's a child in a forty year old body. It's 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 actually it's not even insane. It's just it's very intri it's intriguing. That's the word. It's like damn, there's really people walking around in this world like this. <laughs> um, quick question on that: What is the significance of the initials and date? It's as as it pertains to for me not having to do that for the, the I think you know what I'm saying for me. The form that I have was signed yesterday, the 27th. Today's the 28th. It's an indication anyone reviewing it later would know that that was added at a different date. Okay. It preserves the record from my perspective. Okay, gotcha. All right. You know, I just had a thought out of these um, seven people, the, the three attorneys in the front, the well i should say was it the five attorneys and the judge daryl brooks is li literally the stupidest person in the group honestly truly and fully he has the lowest iq out of everybody just dumb dumb as a piece of wood bro and that's why he ran through the parade everybody wants to know why you guys want to know why you guys want to know the answer it's because he's stupid that's it he's he's a dummy <laughs> The record should now reflect I do have the original, which actually is a little bit easier to read than the scanned version. And um, 
Mr. Brooks did check the box that was originally left unchecked. There appears to be three initials and then today's date. Thank you. Can the offer your next point? Uh, last point as it relates to the form and it goes hand in hand with what just occurred. At the bottom of the form, it states in all bold letters, this form shall not be modified. It may be supplemented with additional material. I think that's standard printing on the form, but I just want Mr. Brooks to be aware that obviously you are accepting the form as modified by him at his request so that there's no uh, question later that you accepted the form contrary to the printing on the form that says it should not be modified. Thank you for bringing that up as well. I certainly understand that. Um, Mr. Brooks, you would agree any of the changes that were made were made by you and not this court. Yeah. I mean, we, I feel like we, we've, we've covered everything dealing with that form. I, I don't understand the relevancy of stressing the form that we just spent so much time going over. I think you were more than clear in your advisements of exactly what the form meant. You know why he's just going all general? And what they're saying is that the form says this document shall not be modified. So if later on things don't go his way, he'll point out like, ooh, 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 see, the document said that it shouldn't be modified. So you have to nullify everything we did anyway. He's so dumb. He's just like, no, no, we went over the form. You touched on it. You covered it. We spent so much time. He's trying to put on his lawyer. He's trying to put on his lawyer cap. It ain't working, buddy. He's doing all that because he doesn't even understand the the, the concern they raised. It, I'm, I'm surprised J Judge Darrell didn't break that little point down for him. But that's the whole reason he's doing this. He doesn't even understand the point they raised, bro. Crazy. And I think you were pretty clear. Thank you. Was that it, Attorney Opper? Uh, that's it to the form. I would request an opportunity to be heard on the motion uh, prior to ruling or if you're going to defer ruling. Um, no, I am going to rule. I will certainly give you an opportunity uh, to make any statements you want um, before I issue a final decision. So go ahead. The only outstanding issue, Your Honor, we have not yet spoken of it uh, today on the record was the letter that was filed by the defendant's mother. Uh, I believe it came in late yesterday afternoon or first thing this morning um, in which she has indicated she thinks uh, Mr. Brooks is uh, not competent to be making these decisions. I just wanted the record to reflect that we've reviewed uh, the history of offenses for Mr. Brooks in the state of Wisconsin. We know he has a record. Hold on, look at the face he made. I'm listening that his, I'm listening to what his mom said that he's not capable to make these decisions. Look at the face he makes. I'm gonna zoom it in, boom. And then look at his lawyer's reaction. Get the record to reflect that we've reviewed uh, the history of offenses for Mr. Brooks. Bro is a clown. That's all I gotta say in the state of Wisconsin. We know he has a record outside the state of Wisconsin, but we have not uh, been able to develop that. Uh, first, the record should reflect that he is experienced in the criminal justice system. He has been charged and convicted and sentenced for prior felony offenses. He's been through the court system on at least 10 prior occasions or 10 prior cases, I should say. That's crazy. In the state of Wisconsin. The majority coming from Milwaukee County, one from Wood County, one from Manitowoc County. We could not find on any occasion searching court records available online uh, a situation where Mr. Brooks had uh, competency was ever raised or he had claimed himself to be incompetent or. Uh, that's pretty that's pretty crazy to have a 10 arrest and conviction arrest record. You mean to tell me you got arrested 10 times and convicted 10 times, bro? So, again, like she's saying, her, her, his mom claiming that he's not competent to stand in this trial and to say the things he's saying, 
Bro, we have a track record of 10, not three, not five, not even seven, bro. We have 10. And in not one of those was there a, comp a competency issue raised. Okay, so boom, boom, bam. Bro is competent. He didn't become insane one year later. You know what I mean? Like, that's not how it works. Let's let's continue. But it's crazy how they're doing all of this to make sure any type of crazy move he tries to pull off won't work out. A council or the court had uh, ordered an evaluation for competency. It's never been an issue in any of his 10 prior cases. We're also aware of the... NGI evaluations that were performed in this case, it's certainly a different issue, competency versus insanity, but they were all uh, licensed professionals, uh, psychologists and psychiatrists, in my professional opinion, would have alerted the court if in the course of their NGI evaluation, they thought there was concern as to the competency of Mr. Brooks. That did not occur as well. Lastly, I would uh, uh, note, and Attorney Perry touched on this at the beginning, he started to, to touch on it, that Attorneys Perry and Keyes apparently have never felt that competency was an issue or needed to be addressed uh, by this court. It has not been raised by them. Court record here is clear. I've been at every court appearance. I have never had any concerns of Mr. Brooks' competency. He is, appears to me to be intelligent he appears to fully understand what's going on in these court proceedings she just gave him the biggest compliment of this entire court trial by saying he's intelligent maybe she just said the biggest lie of this entire court trial because bro ain't intelligent i mean he like he's an intelligent human being meaning like he can you know critically think sort of but bro ain't smart he's not like come on you're using that word really lightly on this man with the diaper on his face, the backwards diaper on his face. Has the ability to communicate uh, efficiently and effectively with the court. Uh, he has uh, responded to the court. Some of his answers seem to fall more in line with his declaration yesterday that he's a sovereign citizen, but he has always participated in the court proceedings and uh, never appeared to be uh, in such a in such a manner that he was not able to understand or assist in the proceeding. So I just wanted to make that record as well. And uh, I think that's it for my comments, Your Honor. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, um, Mr. Brooks. Anything you want to add to the record at this point regarding the request? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, I'm I'm trying to grasp the, the the relevancy of that whole issue um especially the part that was just said about me participating in everything seeming to know um everything that's going on in the proceedings up until this point it's kind of kind of misleading a little bit i think by the state because i recall it being an issue when the whole misunderstanding happened in court back in last month i think it was the 26th if i'm correct it was a whole issue about me being quote unquote asleep in court so i think that's kind of misleading to say to raise all the competency things i've i've been intelligent and all these things and then raise the same things kind of that's kind of like a clash I don't understand what the fuck he's asking. Let's see if let's see if Judge Doro understands what the fuck. I don't. I I lost track of what he's asking. I don't understand that. I don't understand the relevancy of it. I don't understand the relevancy of uh, the NGI plea being referenced to when that plea was essentially withdrawn. Um, I don't see the relevancy of prior cases. With this case in front of you now, I just, I don't see the relevancy. In it. I think you're more than capable of making the right 
determination based by what you have in front of you now. Thank you. Before this court gives a final decision, I want to go through a little bit of the procedural. Oh, she didn't even respond to him. <laughs> she said thank you and moved on. <clears throat> Excuse me. She said thank you and moved on. That's insane. Thank you. Now, regarding that, that's some cold shit. I would feel offended. I would be mad. I would be super offended. I'd be like, you didn't even acknowledge what. You well, she said thank you. She acknowledged it. <laughs> history of this case not long um, and then some of the case law because it is important um, as this court decides this very important issue so as everyone i think is aware um, the waukesha parade occurred on november 21 of 2022 i believe it was two days later on november 23 that charges were filed year was 21. Did right. I say 2022? Yeah. Thank you. We're in 2022. Thank you. Um, 2021 uh, is the incident. This case is 21 CF 1848. There's been a significant amount of litigation in this case already. There was a contested preliminary hearing. Uh, then the first appearance occurred before branch two on March 11th of 2022. Um, about 202 days ago. It was on that date that this court set aside the month of October to hold the trial. The first trial order was issued. Um, many of the dates were discussed, but the trial order wasn't issued until April 11th of 2022. That is when it was formalized. Uh, going back to the March 11th date, though, um, a decision was used on that date to utilize a jury questionnaire, meaning a case specific jury questionnaire. There were related deadlines that were discussed. On the March 29th, uh, we held uh, a hearing to discuss the questions and finalize the questionnaire. Um, at that point, uh, the court was alerted to the defense potentially raising a motion to adjourn. I set a motion date. The court heard and denied a motion to adjourn the trial. From my perspective, that motion was primarily related to potential concerns of the defense regarding the ability to be prepared. Um, we discussed additional deadlines. Uh, from my perspective, this is a case where the state has worked diligently to quickly uh, turn over all discovery material. From my understanding, again, not having reviewed all of it, that's not my function at this point, though it was very voluminous. It included paper discovery, electronic discovery, um, but uh, the court set uh, appropriate deadlines for the exchange of witness lists. Of course, Mr. Brooks initially entered a special plea on June 20th of 2022, um, where the uh, plea of not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect was entered that uh, resulted in a certain series of events occurring. Um, just prior to that, I, I also. Uh, it's funny that he pled for mental like uh, instability or whatever, and then they denied it. And then now he wants to represent himself. So you mean to tell me you tried to first say I'm not mentally capable, but now you're capable enough to be your own lawyer make that make sense that'll blow your mind it'll you, you're not going to figure that one out figure that riddle out you plead insanity and then after that you become your own lawyer that's ain't that crazy ain't that something <laughs> we already referenced this finalized the first trial order april 11th um ultimately i amended that on july 12th of 2022 to uh, encompass some of the issues related to the ngi then this court held uh, two days worth of hearings on August 25 and 26 um, to address a variety of motions. Um, I know you may not understand the relevance, sir, but it is important just to note that on August 26, there was an outburst by Mr. Brooks. Um, it resulted in the court taking an early recess um, and he was temporarily removed from the courtroom when he came back. Um, there was, uh, we took a break, I should say, and then there was the outburst that resulted in the removal, but he came back. 
Um, he was there, I think, for about two hours before he requested to leave the proceeding. Um, but I believe the record would fully demonstrate that when I questioned him regarding his desire to leave, he demonstrated an understanding. Yeah, he's just, he's here to cause the biggest ruckus that he can cause. The biggest, like, you know what I mean? Just the biggest noise, the biggest, like, he knows he's going to go to jail. Well, maybe not at this point. Maybe he feels like he could, you know, find the rule or do some sovereign sis and BS to save himself. But he knows there's a real high chance of him going to jail. So he's going to do anything he can to kick and scream. It's just like when you get arrested. People do anything not to go to jail. They'll scream, cuss, kick, bite, yell, and they still end up going to jail. That's what he's doing, but in the courtroom. You would see that a lot more often if people defended themselves. Luckily, we have lawyers, and a lot of people aren't stupid enough like him to, you know, represent themselves. But that's all he's doing. Bro got removed from the courtroom, and it took him two hours to come back. You know how much time that's wasting? You know what I mean? The questionnaire, if he really wants to leave, you know how much time that's wasting? He's just stalling from here. Way a month ago, stalling, stalling, digging his feet into the ground, pushing his heels into the ground, stalling. And then it finally got to the end, and he didn't know what to do at that point. That, and then he had a two-hour-long speaking from the heart session. It, 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 the story, you can't make this shit up, guys. You can't make that shit up of what he was doing. He answered my questions at that time. Um, he understood uh, from my perspective that uh, he was leaving the proceedings. Then uh, the court moved on to September 9th. That was the jury status. On that particular date, the court essentially adjourned the proceedings. Mr. Brooks complained of a tooth abscess um, I was able to fit it in with my schedule, and so the jury status was adjourned until um, September 19th. The jury status was held. Uh, we covered a number of issues um, at that time. Um, the state raised the need or the desire to have the court rule on some additional issues. We set some deadlines for that at no time prior to the jury status. Was this court ever advised of Mr. Brooks' desire to represent itself? And then it, it was on um, the 21st of September that the motion was filed. Man, if any, if if there's anything this lady is going to do, she's going to put that shit on the damn record. If there's anything she's going to do, she's not letting this go past here. There's no appeal, people. This is one and done. We're not doing this again. She is saying to herself, this is one and motherfucking done. We are not doing this anymore. You know what I mean? Everybody came into this trial with that in mind. But anyways, people, uh, that was it. That was it for this. Um, keep Stay tuned, people. Stay tuned for the videos in the future. Go check out my Treehouse Murder case that I'm covering right now. Um... And yeah, you know, I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you guys, man. You guys changed my life for real. Like, you know what I mean? Like I have a whole different outlook of what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of years. So um, s stick around, build with me. I love you guys. Shout you guys out again for 12,000 subscribers. Shout out all my Patreon members, guys. I love, I love each and every one of you guys. Shout out all my YouTube members. You guys are amazing. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Stay inside, stay safe, and um, I'm out of here.